Ken Cuccinelli. He's former acting DHS Deputy Secretary and Center for Renewing America Senior Fellow. Ken, great to see you. Thanks for being here. How could our Good border czar, I guess she's a czarina, how, but how could our border czar <laughs> visit visit Texas and not go to the border? I mean, it's just, it's, it's almost like criminal negligence. I mean, you well, think of all the criminal behavior down there. It's criminal negligence, but it's consistent with the criminal negligence she has engaged in since taking this office. And let's remember, I mean, you, one of your, your, your guest congressmen there referenced Henry Cuellar, Democrat who's been on this administration for their failure on the border since the beginning. And this administration has been underwater in polling with Democrat voters on these open borders policies. Your reporter just noted the security issues that are obvious when you have people coming from Russia, Somalia, Eritrea. Now, uh, and, you know, Russia has all sorts of new features to the security considerations since their invasion of Ukraine. And, uh, and so it isn't just Central Americans. And, and the overwhelming majority of the so-called asylum claims are, to quote the president, malarkey. It's an excuse yeah. to yeah. stay in our system, which under the Biden administration, they intend to mean forever. And yet, and yet, you, you have these new policies that Mayorkas has, has come out with, that the, the current DHS secretary has come out with, in which essentially they, they turn the whole nation into a sanctuary city. You know, they, they say they've made it now that illegal yes. status is no longer enough to justi justify deportation. And you wonder how many of the bad guys that are getting in uh, are, are the ISIS has, has, has picked them as, as dangerous, potentially dangerous felons, and they can't do anything about it now because uh, ICE has been neutered. Well, self-neutered. I mean, one of the things this administration has done without changing the law is they've reorganized ICE and CBP to tie them in knots so they are incapable of achieving their national security missions. The statutes on the books say that not only can you deport anyone here illegally, anyone, without conditions, but that they must be detained until a determination is made whether they get to stay as legal or be deported. And they're not abiding by that either. They're literally rewriting the law to undermine American security. And, and I think they're going to get a rude wake-up call at the, at the midterms, including in Texas, where the vice president right. is visiting right. But today. essentially, they're violating their own new rules. I mean, it's like, why come up with new rules yes. if you violate your own new rules? You know, speaking of criminals, there's just a, a stat that, <laughs> that, uh, that came out recently that just astounded me. That, that, uh, D and this comes from DHS itself, so they've admitted to this, the soaring right. profits of human smugglers. They went from making 500 million yes. in human, human uh, smuggling back in 2018 to $13 billion now in 2022, and right. it could go up from that. That's a 2,500% increase. We are essentially empowering yes. the cartels with our policies. We absolutely are, and look, we talk about them as criminals, but in parts of Mexico, they are the government. They control parts of Mexico the Mexican government does not. They have military apparatuses. They have intelligence networks that reach into the United States. All you have to do is fly along the border, and you can see it. You see their agents sitting on top of hills with cell phones, and uh, those are working for the cartels. And so they, this money that now the Biden administration has admitted essentially facilitating the cartel's earning is creating narco-terrorist states on our southern border. Thank you, Joe Biden yeah. and Alejandro Mayorkas. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're completely empowered, both financially and with all the weapons that they, they use that money to buy weapons largely. Uh, meanwhile, and that's just the human smuggling. Yes, exactly. And, and, and of course, that's the only humans... only the human smuggling. The human that has smuggling, nothing to do with the drugs and everything else. But they, they combine that. They use the knowledge that they get from human yeah. smuggling to help them with the drug smuggling, which provides uh, fentanyl for... The, for the drug well, not just the, the knowledge, David. They'll, because they control the border, they'll drive the flow at where they know Customs Border Protection to be staffed, yeah. overwhelm them from a human services standpoint, and then run the drugs in another direction. Go ask your local cop, whoever's watching you and me, what has happened to the local street price of fentanyl? heroin, cocaine, all of which are coming across that southern border, killing tens of thousands of Americans. It has plummeted as mm -hmm. fast 
as the profits for the cartels have gone up that you just described. All right. Well, David. meanwhile, even some Democrats are, are noting that the problem begins with the open borders. I want to play a little soundbite from uh, Mayor Adams here in New York City. Roll tape. New Yorkers are angry. I am angry, too. We have not asked for this. There was never any agreement to take on the job of supporting thousands of asylum seekers. We need a realistic decompression strategy at the border that will slow the outflow of asylum seekers. So he understands it's a border, but, but what bugs me about him and the wow. mayor of Chicago and the mayor of D.C. is they're still, they don't blame Biden for shipping so many immigrants in no. the dead of night to, to New York and Chicago and Washington instead. And the number is much bigger, by the way. We've, we can put the numbers up. 122,000 uh, immigrants were resettled right. by Biden. And uh, under uh, the, the new stuff that's going on, the buses from, from Texas to New York and, and D.C., that's only 15,000 in comparison. Right. Yeah, and we were flagging this at Center for Renewing America last summer. And the hypocrisy of people like Adams is astonishing. We didn't, have, and note his language, decompression from the border. As you note, he doesn't say defend the border, stick it with, stick Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and California with this. We didn't ask for this. I got news for you, Eric Adams. When New York voted for Joe Biden, you did ask for this. Yeah. You did ask for this. And all you're saying now is you really don't want what you asked for. And uh, we need a real security policy on the border. We need to close the borders, not have open borders, and, be, and start returning these uh, folks who are here illegally. Until we do, uh, I hope that Greg Abbott and Doug Ducey and Governor DeSantis from Florida keep sending these folks to these so-called sanctuary cities where they're not prepared to give them sanctuary. Ken Cuccinelli. Ken, great to see you again.